if you'll turn there with me quickly, and uh, we'll get in and out as quick as possible. First Thessalonians chapter 4, and for time's sake, I'm just going to read one verse. It says, 1 Thessalonians 4, this is the Apostle Paul, the great Apostle Paul. He, he wrote and he said this, I charge thee before God and before the Lord Jesus Christ who shall judge the quick and the dead at His appearing in kingdom. Preach the Word. And that's what I'm going to do today. I'm going to preach the Word. And in 1 Thessalonians 4, uh, it says there that, that we beseech you, brethren. Now this is 1 Thessalonians. 4.1 uh, Furthermore, we beseech you, brethren, and exhort you by the Lord Jesus that as ye have received of us how ye ought to walk and to please God. I want you to underline that. To please God. As a Christian, you know what? We, want, we, should, want, we should want to please God. I don't know about you, but me... I want to please God. I, I, as a preacher, I want to please God. As a husband, I want to please God. I want to please my wife and I want to please my family, but my ultimate goal is to please God. If I please God, I will be a pleasure to my family. Amen? Yes. I'll be the kind of preacher I should be if I'll please God. I like what... The Lord said there what what happened at Jesus' baptism. Jesus was baptized and there was a voice heard from heaven that said, This is my Son in whom I'm well pleased. Amen. Would you like to please God? Amen. As a Christian, it should be our heart's desire we, to please God. We should want to please God. And I want to please God. And what I did is, for time's sake, I'm just going to tell you, I just went through the Scriptures and I looked to see some places where it said that God was pleased and some things that pleased God. And I just want to share a few of those with you. This sermon is by no means all that it takes to please God. But in this sermon, you'll see a few ways that we can please God. First of all, I want you to, uh, to, to, to look over at Hebrews chapter 11. Just turn and look at Hebrews chapter 11. And we'll see the first way to please God is to depend on Him. If you want to please God, depend on Him. In Hebrews 11, in verse 6, it says, But without faith it is impossible to please Him. For he that cometh to God must believe that He is and that He is rewarder of them that diligently seek Him. In order to please God, you have to put your faith and trust in Him. You have to depend on Him. In other words, it pleases God when I depend on Him. As a father, I'll tell you, you know what pleases me? When one of my Kids, I've got two girls, you know that. But when one of them needs something and they come to me and they feel that I can help them, it pleases me to know that they depend on me. They feel they can trust me, that they can, they can count on me. It pleases me. So much more our Heavenly Father when we turn to Him and we call on Him and we depend on Him. How does it please Him when we call on Him? Amen. So what can we depend on the Lord for? Well, salvation. Salvation. God chose the foolishness of preaching to save them that would believe. And the Bible actually said that God, God is pleased by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. God is very pleased when somebody gets up and preaches the Bible and someone listening hears and believes that Jesus died for them and accepts that. That Amen. pleases God. God's chosen method for saving the lost is preaching. And it pleases Him according to the Word of God. Whether, whether you're preaching and someone gets saved or whether you're the believer who hears the preaching of the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ, who realizes they're lost and needs a Savior and decides to step forward and accept Him. Either one can please God. 
It pleases God when people get saved because they're depending on Him. I, I like over there in 1 Kings chapter 3, Solomon. Solomon is the wisest man that ever lived. We know that. But Solomon at this point was not the wisest man that ever lived. Solomon was just the king's son whose, whose dad had just passed away and left him the throne. Solomon is just a scared young man who has found himself with a kingdom to run whose yes. shoes King David would have been very hard to appeal. <coughs> David was a man of war, a man of worship. He was a working man. He was one that would have been hard to appeal his shoes, and Solomon knew that. And Solomon, Solomon was, was, uh, uh, had a conversation with the Lord, and the Lord said, Ask whatsoever you want, and I'll give it to you. You want riches? I'll give it to you. You want fame? I'll give it to you. You want whatever? I'll give it to you. You know what Solomon asked for? He said, give me wisdom that I might rule this people, this thy people, this thy great people. And it so pleased God, according to the Scripture, that not only did He give Him wisdom, He made, us the, made Him the wisest man that ever lived outside the Lord Jesus Christ. He made him that wise and he blessed him his reign with peace. They weren't at war during Solomon's time. Blessed him with wealth and, and fame. He blessed him in every area of his life. Why? Because he pleased God. He asked not for something for himself, but that he might rule the people with wisdom for their benefit. It pleased God. Now, if you're here today and you're lost, it's hard to please God. There's only one thing that you need to do that would please God. I can tell you how to please God. The greatest you can do, the greatest thing you can do to please God is to realize you're a sinner. Realize that your works will not save you. Your goodness and all that you do that you think so great is filthy rags in the eyes of the Lord. It's filthy rags. The greatest thing you can do is you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ Amen. and accept Him as your Savior. Realize that Jesus died on the cross to pay for your sins. He wasn't doing it for the fun of it. He wasn't doing it because it got everybody's attention. He did it because it was the only way to save you and me. And He knew it. He who did not sin became sin for us and died in our stead that we could put our faith in Him and He'd save us. So you want to please God? Depend on Him. Number two, if you want to please God, develop fear of God. Listen to this. Psalms 147, verse 10 and 11. He delighteth not in the strength of the horse. He taketh not pleasure in the legs of man. That's where we, our strength is. The Lord taketh pleasure in them that fear Him and those that hope in His mercy. Those that fear Him, He takes pleasure in that. And you say, wait a minute, that don't make sense. When we fear Him, we will obey Him. As a father, I want my children to fear me. You say, preacher, I don't want my kids to fear me. They'll run all over you if they don't. I want my kids to fear me. Not so much that they, 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 they cower in the corner when I walk in the room or when I say something, they, they, they get scared and run and hide. I want my children to be able to come to me and be able to open and say anything they want to me. But I want them to fear me enough that they behave themselves. It'll keep them out of trouble. I want them to have enough fear of my wrath that they behave themselves. And as a child of God, he wants us to fear Him just like that. Amen. Not so much that we cower and hide. Not so much that we can't come and confess our faults and our shortcomings and find warmth and mercy and forgiveness, but fear Him enough that we don't go out and do sin. Over there in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, He's not pleased with Israel. Talking about when they were wandering in the wilderness. They would, they, would, they would do good. Then they went into the promised land and how that God would deliver them and then they would forget God. And they'd start doing whatever they wanted to. They had no more fear of God. 
and they would get off into some sin and God would deliver them to the enemy. He had to chastise them. Why? Because without the fear of the Lord, you won't keep the commandments of the Lord. You won't do what He says. You won't obey Him unless you fear Him. You know why, you know why kids are more afraid of Daddy than Mama? Because Daddy's more likely to carry through with the punishment than Mama. Mama will say, you quit that, you quit that, I'm going to spank you, I'm going to spank you, I'm going to spank you. You just wait till your daddy gets home. I'm going to spank you, I'm going to tell him to spank you, we're going to get the dog to spank you. You get to spank him when daddy gets home. Daddy gets home, she don't say anything to daddy, the kid gets to bed and gets up the next day. And the kid does it again, I'm going to spank you over and over and over. Finally, when mama's had enough, she'll finally spank the kid and it shocks the kid. <laughs> But if daddy says, boy, sit down and shut up or I'm going to spank you, the boy usually will sit down and shut up. Why? Because daddy usually don't have to ask two or three times and daddy get up and go back and spank him. Yeah. That's right. They know daddy is more likely to carry through. Our heavenly father, he carries through. If he says that you can bank on it, amen. So we ought to fear him, Amen. Alright, let's keep going. As a child, we need our children to fear us just like we want, just like God wants us, His children, to fear Him. Church, we need to fear God as a church. If we'll fear God as a church, if we'll do the things that He would have a church to do, amen, and follow His direction and His lead, not the world's lead, God will prosper us as a church, as a country. Our country needs to fear God. Not only as a country, but you go down as couples. Even our couples in here need to fear God. Amen. We want our children to fear God. We need our couples to fear God. We need our church to fear God. We need our city to fear God. And we need our country to fear God. Amen. Boy, it changed things if people just got back to old fashioned fear of the Lord. Amen. Amen. All right, let's keep going. Another thing that would please God, declare His greatness. Declare His greatness. Amen. Uh, in Psalm 69 and verse 30, I will praise the name of God with, with a song and will magnify Him with thanksgiving. This also shall please the Lord better than an ox or a bullock than that horns and hoofs. Now, you know what pleases God? When we speak His praises, when we sing His praises, when we shout His praises, you want to glorify the Father? I'll tell you how to do it. I'll tell you exactly how to do it. This is awesome if you get a hold of this. If you want to glorify God, praise His Son. You want to excite the Father? Brag on His boy. Amen. You want to see a Father? You want to see a Father get real happy? Brag on his son and watch him. It's just as good, if not better, than bragging on him sometimes. Why? Because a father so loves that his, his son that he'd do anything for him. And when you brag on his son, it just does something for him. Our Heavenly Father is the same way. You just brag on the Lord and you exalt the Lord and you magnify the Lord and you sing His praises and you shout His praises and you soul win and tell others about how great things He has done for you and sing His praises everywhere you go. It can make a difference. It pleases the Lord. You know, rather, than, rather than pleasing the Lord, most of us are complaining. Rather than praising Him and His Son, we're complaining about what He's given us or what the, the lot that we're in or the situation. Or We spend more time complaining about our lot than praising God for what we have. Sure. Amen, we do. Yeah. And we shouldn't. But here, I've got one more uh, thing. i time to, for one more thing and I'm just not sure which one it'll be. But we should declare His greatness. Amen. Uh, number next, whatever it is. Dedicate yourself to Him. Not only should we depend on Him, develop fear, declare His greatness, but we should dedicate ourselves to Him. 2 Timothy 2 and verse 4. No man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please Him who hath chosen Him to be a soldier. Now we should stay uh, away from the things of this world. We should not get so caught up in the things of this world that we can't please God. 
Some people get so busy they're working two and three jobs just for toys. They don't have time to go to church. They don't feel like they got time to read their Bible. They don't have time to have family altar with their family. Or they don't have time to pray together as a family. They don't have time. Why? For toys? For material things? What's keeping you from pleasing the Lord a lot of time is you're so entangled with the cares and concerns of this world. Don't let the cares and concern of this world keep you from pleasing God. Dedicate yourself to Him. Here's another one. I can give you this one. I'll close with this one. Here's one. You want to please God? Decide to obey your parents. What? Where did that come from? Uh, Colossians 3.20 Children, obey your parents in all things, for this is well pleasing unto the Lord. It didn't just say it was pleasing unto the Lord like all the other verses. It said it's well pleasing. You know what? You want to please the Lord? I'll tell you how to please the Lord. Submit to authority. Amen. Children, obey your parents. Employees, obey your boss. Amen? Amen? Submit to the authority that God has put in your life and it pleases God. You want God's blessings on your life? You please God and He'll bless you. There's no doubt about that. You please God, God's going to bless you. You want to please Him? I'll tell you how to do it. Submit to the authority God's put in your life wherever it is in whatever fashion it is. Children, obey your parents. Wives, submit to your husbands. Husbands, su su submit to the Lord. Amen. The congregation to the pastor. Uh, Sunday school class to the Sunday school teacher. Employee to the boss man. All of us to the police officers and, and, and people that God's putting authority over us. Submit to authority. Show loyalty where loyalty is due. And be exactly what you ought to be. Amen? Just do that stuff. It's just simple. Do right. And it'll please the Lord. Because you know what? You know what will bring, bring this honor to the Lord? Disrespecting your parents. Disrespecting authority. Not doing what you're supposed to do. It brings dishonor. It brings dishonor. You know, it, only, it not only brings dishonor, but it brings shame. You've got a kid that goes out and breaks the law and does something wrong. Does it not come back to the parents and embarrass the parents? Now listen, I know and I understand there's a point when a kid gets a certain age, they're no longer the parent's responsibility. The parent can't control them after they get so big and so old. They go out and do what they do on their own and it shouldn't reflect on the parents. But often the parents still feel the shame. The parents still carry that burden. It still crushes that parent. How much more do you think the Lord is when we call ourselves Christians and we go out and live like the devil? How much more does it bring dishonor and shame to him? I imagine the old accuser of the brother goes up there regularly and says, Hey! Look down there at old brother Kira. That's one of yours, ain't it? Look at him. And that's one of yours. You see what he's doing? You hear what he said? You, you see what he watched on TV or looked at on the internet or the music you listened to or the conversation he had on the phone? You constantly, constantly pointing out every fault of mine. Yeah. If you want to please him, I'll tell you how to do it. Submit to the authority he's put in your life and just do right. Just do right. I don't know about you, church, but I want to please the Lord. I want to please the Lord, not just on Sunday. I want to please Him on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. I want to please Him in the morning, at noon, and at night. I want to please Him when I'm awake. I want to please Him when I'm asleep. Amen? I want to please the Lord. I don't want to bring any reason that the devil can come up and say, look at that. You saved him, and this is supposed to be one of yours. Now, I know we all fall short. I'm not giving you an excuse to sin. I understand we all fall short. But we ought to be striving to please the one that died for us. There ought to be something in our hearts that has a desire to please the one 
who gave his all for us. I'm going to ask you to bow your head and close your eyes.